Hello everybody, Tintiri back again for another video. Today's video is going to be about talking about the Wimbledon, my thoughts so far that we have seen in four days now. Uh, and mostly to talk about the Murray and Oscar Otto match and Hugo Humbert, Nick Kyrgios. Hugo Humbert, Nick Kyrgios, that was to me the biggest popcorn match of the first round. Uh, a match that took two days to be to be played because of the rain delays and things like that. Uh, we have had some popcorn matches in the first round, like uh, Kurt Schreiber against uh, uh, Denis Shapovalov, De Munar against uh, Korda, Straff against Daniel Medvedev. But to me, for me, the biggest popcorn match of the first round was, without any shadow of a doubt, uh, Hugo Bart versus Nick Kyrgios. We all know you, uh, Nick Kyrgios, how talented he is. Hate him or love him. Make, make your own pick. Uh, I'm between. I'm some uh, somewhere in between. I like his game. I I, I like his hands. Uh, I like his cre cre creativity. He's so cre creative on, on the court. He has such a nasty serve, both first and second serve. He's good at the net. He has decent returns. Really good backhand. Really flat. He can flatten out that backhand. He can hit it down the line. Uh, he can hit it. Uh, Whatever he wants on the court and his forehand, of course, is really good. Maybe, not maybe, his serve and forehand, of course, are his biggest weapons in this game. His weaknesses, we all know his weaknesses, it is his head. He's so lazy, he doesn't train as much tennis as, say, the 90% of the tour. He has not played any tennis tournament since Astral Open, four months ago, guys. And now he was facing Hugo Umbert, a player who just won a... a Pretty big tournament, a 500 class tournament. It is not a master or a major, but winning a 500 master, a 500 master tournament, five, five master class tournament, 500, like he did at in Halle, if, if, in a kind of a big, uh, uh, great field. You go back. He defeated two top 10 players on the way. Those two players were Alexander Sasha Zverev and uh, Andre Rublev. So Hugo Bad was coming into this match with a, as the slight favorite. At least in my in my book, Hugo Bad was the slight favorite. I thought Hugo Bad would um, win this match, but uh, and I gave him my slightest edge when I saw this matchup. They faced each other already in Astral Open in the second round. Uh, Hugo and Nick Kyrgios, and Nick was the stronger one there. Won the fifth set, if I remember correctly, 6-4 after coming back, after being down in the score 1-2 with sets. Nick turns that table around and wins it in five, wins the fourth and fifth set. Deja vu, my tennis friends all around the world. Nick Kyrgios does the same thing against Hugo Mbapp in this first round match at Wimbledon 2021. He comes back after being down in sets 2-1 and wins the fifth 9-7. What a battle this was, man. This was a... I didn't see, of course, the, this the entire match. I just seen some, uh, some highlights because I was seeing another match. Uh, this was really a battle. This was really a fight. This was really a war. Um, am I surprised that Nick won? Of course I'm not. We are talking about Nick Kyrgios. He is probably, not probably, he's one of the most talented players in the world. If he just was more committed to, his, to the tennis, if he just was more uh, motivated to train, if he just was more focused, he for sure would have won for now more than six titles that he has won. He for sure would have done much more deeper runs in slams because his deepest runs in slams has been quarterfinal appearances, guys. 2014 at Wimbledon, he was in the quarterfinal. And 2015 at Astral Open, he was at quarterfinal. In French Open and, and in um, uh, US Open, the deepest runs he has had, it has been third round appearances. He has not been deeper than that in French Open and in US Open. Not deeper than third rounds. So, obviously, Nick Kyrgios, he has the ability. He has the talent. He has the... He, he really has so much uh, 
weapons in his repertoire to really do deep runs. We all know this. So I'm not surprised at all that he, t he, that he takes out Yugon Bat. I really am not. Uh, and I didn't give Yugon Bat too much of a... I gave him just my slightest, slightest edge. Say, I, 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 I was thinking before the match, I will give Yugon Bat 51% winning chances and I will give Nick Kyrgios 49% winning chances. And the reason why I did that was because... Nick Kyrgios has not played any tennis tournament in four months, guys, since Astral Open um, in February. And Yugon Bat, he has been pretty horrible, to be quite honest, Yugon Bat, the entire season, losing first, second, and third rounds. Uh, but he won, he was pretty impressive at Halle, and he was coming in this tournament with big confidence. And I was considering about, of those reasons, I was giving Yugon Bat my slightest edge. But Nick Kyrgios, he won. He delivered, he was serving good. I believe he did 23 aces uh, and six double faults, something like that. Was landing pretty high of, of, uh, first serves in percentage. 69 was winning, 73% uh, behind his first serves in, yeah. Was winning, uh, 63 behind his second serves. That was the main difference here. The winning points behind second serves. And this is what tennis is about, guys. Majority of the matches that a player wins is when he is more successful at win in winning points behind second serves than his opponent. Because Jürgen Bart, he was winning actually more points behind first serves than, than um, uh, Nick Kyrgios actually. Jürgen Bart, he landed less first serves in, 64%, uh, but was winning more points behind first serves in than, than Nick Kyrgios. Jürgen Bart was winning 75% behind first serves in. But the difference here, my tennis fans all around the world, was winning points behind second serves. Jürgen Bart wins only 44% of the second serve points, of the second serve points behind second serves. 44% compare that with Nick Kyrgios, 63%. Why? Because Nick obviously, of course, has a better second serve than Hugo Bart, and Nick also returns better than Hugo Bart. Uh, Nick actually has pretty underrated uh, returns, especially his uh, uh, backhand returns. He really likes to, uh, he really returns good with his backhand, not so much good with his forehand. So if you want to have success, if you want to be successful against the Kyrgios in your serves, uh, uh, try to serve as much as possible towards his forehand because he returns better with his backhand than he does with his forehand, at least according to me, what I have seen about the Kyrgios. So, uh, pretty, pretty, and at the end of the day, they created, both of them created 13 breakpoint opportunities each, but the difference was here that Nick was taking more of, he was, he was converting more. Nick uh, converted 5 out of 13 breakpoint opportunities, and Hugo Bart, he converted only 3 out of 13 breakpoint opportunities. And in the fifth set, which is the most important set, of course, Hugo Bart, he has, I believe, 4 breakpoint opportunities. In the fifth set, he doesn't convert in any of them. Nick Kyrgios, he has three break punch opportunities and he converts in one of them. And that is the deal breaker. And that's why Nick in the end won. He breaks serve one more in the fifth set uh, one time and Hugo Bert didn't break serve at all in the fifth set. And that's why in the end, Nick Kyrgios wins and he progresses to the second round. He has pretty good draw in the second round. He will face an Italian dude uh, named Magar or something like that, if I'm pronouncing his name right. If I'm not, I'm sorry. Uh, it is a dude that I've never heard about, guys. He probably plays in most, the, the most of his matches at the Challenger Tour. Nick is a heavy favorite there. Do I believe Nick will do, do a deep run? No, I don't think. N Nick Kyrgios... Uh, in the majors, he usually doesn't do deep runs. He will go, he will break down physically at some point because he tends to have injuries all over the place in his body, in his knees, in his back, in his shoulders, uh, in his neck. I don't know, man. All over the place, he has some kind of injuries. So I expect him to go down physically, to break down physically at some point. And I think he will win the second round, though. Then in the third round, he will face most likely uh, Felicia Lassino. Felicia Lassino will play my countryman, Mikael Umer. Mikael Umer, who defeated Joe Favitsonga in the first round in a five-set epic battle. Uh, Joe Favitsonga is pretty finished, guys. He, most probably, this will be his last season. 
most probably he's losing first and second rounds all the time, so he, he is finished! Joe from Itsonga, that's for sure. Mikael Umer isn't a better player than Joe Itsonga, that's for sure. Mikael Umer hits the ball as soft as the Watea Tour. He doesn't hit the ball hard at all, but he hit the ball enough hard to, to take out Joe Itsonga, that's for sure, because Joe Wilfried Tsonga, he is an unforced error machine nowadays. But Mikael Imer will not take out Felix Chalassim in the second round, that I'm pretty confident about. So we will have a third round battle probably between Nick Kyrgios versus uh, uh, Felix Chalassim. And can Nick Kyrgios take out Felix Chalassim? Of course he can. But I will favor Felix Chalassim in the third round. I have, I have a feeling that Felix is more composed, he's more consistent, he's more... He's stronger physically at, at the current moment. Is Felix more talented than Nick? No, he is not. But at this current moment, I just favor, I give my slightest edge to Felix. But I did that with Hugo as well. Nick proved me wrong in the first round. Let's see if Nick can prove me wrong in the third against Felix Alcimian. If we get that clash, which I believe we will do. And that if Nick somehow passes Felix Alcimian, then he will most likely face uh, Alexander Zverev in the fourth round. That the, they are in the course collision there. So I don't see because I I hear I I read some some in my, in my comments. One of my comments said that Nick Kyrgios is one of few players who can take out Djokovic. Yeah, that's sure. The head-to-head -head is too love to Nick, but Wells head-to-head has been in outside friend outside major matches. Uh, yeah, but yeah, Nick Kyrgios he has ability. Ab ab uh, uh, he has all uh, ab uh, Ability, ability to take out Djokovic, say if... Because he has the tools, he has the serve, he has the forehand, he has the backhand, he has the, he has the hands, he has the belief, he, he has the firepower. Yeah, he's super dangerous. Nick Kyrgios for sure is the most dangerous unseated player in the entire field. Without any shadow of a doubt, we don't have a more dangerous unseated player than Nick Kyrgios in this field. Trust me, guys. But Nick will never go to that final. They are on the opposite of the draw, Djokovic and Nick Kyrgios. You think Nick will go to that final? No way in half. No way in half. I, I predict Nick will crash out in the third round against Felix Alassime. And if not, he crashes out against Felix in the third. In the third, he will for sure crash out against uh, Alexander Zverev in the fourth. So, uh, and if somehow he surpasses, say, Zverev in the fourth, then... He will for sure, I don't, I don't see Nick surpassing Berrettini in the quarterfinal. I don't see, I, I don't see that. Uh, so, uh, uh, and then if Nick say he wins against Berrettini in the quarterfinal, you never know. Can we see Nick beat uh, Medvedev in the semis or Federer in the semis? Uh, because he can face those dudes or maybe Chilich in the semis if Chilich is gets to the semis, which is of course not impossible. Chilic has, has looked pretty good in his first two matches. Uh, no, no. I, so, ha, Nick going to the final? No, 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 no. I will be shocked. I will be shocked if Nick Kyrgios goes to this uh, Wimbledon final and faces Novak Djokovic there. But that would be a really... if That would be a dream final, guys. Nick Kyrgios versus Novak Djokovic. They hate each other. We all know that Nick doesn't like Novak Djokovic at all. And the ver vice versa. They have had so many uh, debates in press conferences. And that's why I... Look, Nick Kyrgios, some hate him, some love him. I am something in between, like I said. I love his honesty. I love honest people, guys. I don't like actors. If I want to see actors, I watch a movie. Nick Kyrgios, he... Says what he feels inside. He has spoken truthfully about Nadal. He has said when Nadal loses, he's a sore loser, which is true. Nadal, when he beats Nick, he, he speaks like this. Oh, Nick is very talented. Nick is, uh, he has big, he has big tools. He has big weapons. He, he's good for the game. When he beats Nick Kyrgios, but when he loses Nadal, uh, Nick is, doesn't respect the game. Nick uh, is, uh, he doesn't show respect. He, 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 he. he He's not a grown-up human being. He doesn't respect the game. He doesn't respect the players. For God's sakes, Nadal, stop being an actor. Say one thing about Nick. Is, is he a good person or a bad person? Don't say he's a good person when you beat him. And don't say he's a bad person when you lose against him. I don't like actors. Like I said, 
actors, if I want to see actors, I, I watch a Hollywood, Hollywood movie. And that's why I like with Nick Kyrgios. He is honest. He is honest outside the outside the court. He says what he feels about players. He doesn't care if it is Djokovic, if it is Nadal, or, it, or it, is it Federer. I love honest people, guys. I don't love. I don't like people who who, who are not honest. That's why I I love Federer. I love Federer playing style. I love watching Roger Federer. Ro when you watch Federer, it is like watching a magician on the court. First strike tennis, especially when he plays good. Because when it, when he doesn't play good, it is ugly to watch him. He sprays unforced arrows with his forehand and backhand and volleys and you name it. You like we saw against uh, Manorino, his forehand was outside. It, it was not in it was not in London. It was not. It was not. It, it left the building. It left the building. My tennis went all around the world, especially in the third, especially in the second and the third set. He found it in the fourth set. So, but when he plays good Roger Federer, it is, a, it is just a joy to watch him. But Federer outside the court, he is not honest often. He says things that are not true. I'm not, I'm not gonna go in details now because I don't have time to doing that. Uh, but what I want to say is that I love honest people and that's why I love Nick, he's honest. What I don't love with Nick is, I don't love his laziness, I don't love his cockiness. He's not, he doesn't have any reason to be cocky, Nick. What has he achieved? What has he achieved? Has he won a Master 1000 title? Has he gone deep in a slam, like semi-final or final? No, Nick, deliver, then be cocky. And, not, and don't be cocky without delivering. He has won only six titles, for God's sakes. So, I love Nick's honestly... Uh, uh, Honestly, when he, when he speaks about players and when he speaks about matches and, and uh, when he analyzes matches and etc, and, and etc, et I don't love Nick's cockiness. So that's why I, in, in, in a way I love Nick, in a way I don't, I don't love Nick. I don't hate him. I don't hate any human being. Uh, so, so let's see what Nick can do on the way on this Wimbledon uh, draw. But I, don't, I for sure don't think we'll have a match between Nick and Djokovic in the final. That's for sure. Then Murray, impressive victory for Murray, won the first uh, match in four set, then won the second against Oscar Otto. Oscar Otto is not an easy dude, guys. He took Zverev to a five set battle at French Open in the first round after being two sets up, up after being two sets love up in the lead against Zverev at French Open. But Zverev came back, came back and turned, turned uh, that around in the French Open against Otto. The same thing Murray did, but Murray was never down too love to to love down again in this match at Wimbledon. He was down 2-1 in sets. Murray turned that around and won in five sets. Great match from Murray. Uh, he did 55 winners, I believe, 35 on the status. So Murray does uh, 20, 20 more winners than Anforceros. Oscar Otto didn't do a bad match himself. He did 60 winners. 60 winners, that is unbelievable. And 38 Anforceros. So Oscar Otto does 22 more winners than Anforceros. Uh, but, so, but Murray was just the more cleaner player. He was the more, he break served more. He, I believe Murray break seven times out of 12 break match opportunities. Oscar Otto break four times out of eight break match opportunities. And that, that you have the deal breaker, guys. And if you look at the winning points behind serves, uh, actual, actually, Oscar Otto wins more points behind first serves. Again, exactly like Nick against Hugo Humbert. Oscar Otto wins 76% behind first serves in. Uh, points, winning points behind first serves, 76%. Murray wins 74. So it is Oscar Otto actually wins more points behind first serves than Andy Murray. The difference here was Murray was winning just slightly more points behind second serves. Murray was winning, was winning 40% behind second serves, which is not a high number. It is not. Murray is... The, He's showing the same, uh, same old sins. Uh, Murray has never had a great second serve. Not even in his prime. And for sure, he's not having that today as well. When, he has, when he's past his prime. Uh, Oscar Otto was even worse. He was winning 38% behind second serves. Uh, and Murray was winning 40% behind second serves. So, there he had the biggest difference here. Uh, which was not a big difference. Murray was winning just slightly more points behind second serves. And like, like I said, if you win points more than your opponent behind second serves, you will majority, you will majority of the time win the matches as well. Doesn't mean necessarily that you, if you win points behind more than your opponent behind first serve, you will win the match. Hugo Bert won more points than Nick behind first serves, he didn't win the match. 
Oscar Otto won points more than Murray behind first serves. He didn't win the match. The key is winning points behind second serves. And if you do that, nine, if not nine, for sure, eight out of ten times in tennis, you will win the tennis matches. So let's see what Murray can do now, guys. Murray will not face Denis Shapovalov, the Amphos error machine. We have some Amphos error machine on the tour, like Denis Shapovalov, like... Like Karachev, he's also an Amphros Arab machine, guys. Yannick Sinner, by the way, Yannick Sinner who lost in the first round, not surprised at all. Uh, Karachev, who lost in the first round as well, not surprised at all. I actually expected that Karachev will not go deep. I thought with myself when I saw the draw, he will lose first or second round. I swear that to God, I thought that with myself. I didn't expect Yannick either to go deep. Yannick, he needs to improve his serve. If Yannick doesn't improve his serve, he will never go deep in majors. For sure, he will not win a Grand Slam. If he doesn't improved you don't win grand slam tournaments with an average serve let's face it you just don't do it this is world cup for tennis guys what we have four world cups in tennis four the major events those are the world cups of tennis guys and you don't win this kind of big events with an average serve like yannick sinner and that's why yannick lost already in the first round and Karachev lost because he's an unforced machine. All the hype about Karachev, he made a deep run at Astro Lopen earlier this year, semi-finals. But I don't know why people are hyping him. I didn't hype him at French Open. I, I thought that he will go, he will crash out early in French Open. He crashed out already in the first round of French Open. I thought he will crash out early at Wimbledon. He crashed out. When I, when I see consistency, then I will hype a player. Without consistency, forget that Inter Italia hypes you. Forget it. Consistency, what is tennis about? What is sport about? Consistency, consistency, consistency. Without consistency, nothing, guys. Just ask Ben Pare, just ask Denis Shapovalov, just ask Fabio Fognini. Fabio Fognini, by the way, who has won two matches. Strong from him. Let's see when he, uh, when he will crash out because it will happen sooner or later. I don't see Fabio Fognini go to a quarterfinal. That's for sure. I, I think he will lose third or fourth round. Uh, as, I, I don't like, I, I don't, I, I don't trust in, uh, in Fabio Fognini. Denis Shapovalov now will face the, Andy Murray, they will never face each other. Can Denis, can Murray take out Denis? Yeah, he can. If Murray just closes that Amphos error store, which he did against Oscar Otto, only 35 errors in five sets, for sure he can take out Denis. I will not be surprised if he takes out Denis. That is a toss-up match for God. Maybe I will give Murray my slightest edge. Maybe. Because Denis Shapovalov, we know, he, he can outpower Murray. He has a bigger serve than Murray. At least a bigger second serve than Andy Murray. The first serve, I don't know, maybe he doesn't have a bigger first serve than Murray. But he for sure has a bigger second serve than Murray. But he for sure doesn't return as good as Murray. He for sure is not as consistent as 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 Andy Murray from the baseline. But now Andy Murray is on a decline. So Murray, say seven, eight years ago, I will be super confident that he, will, he would have taken out Dennis in straight sets. But Murray from today, he played four sets in the first match. He played five sets in the second match. How will his physicality be? How will his body be? I don't know, man. So this is a toss up match. Dennis can win, Murray can win. I will give Murray my slightest edge. All the reason, I would say Murray 51% winning chances, Dennis 49% winning chances. If Philip Korschreiber, 37 years old, can take Dennis to a five-set battle in the first round, why in hell shouldn't Murray do the same? Why? Andy Murray is much better than Philip Korschreiber. For God's sakes, Andy Murray is an 11-time Grand Slam finalist, a three-time Grand Slam champion, a 46-time tour titleist. A two-time Olympic gold medalist. So, if Philip can take Denis Shapovalov to a fifth-set battle and Denis barely defeated Philip with a big decline and we have seen his, all his glory days behind him, why in hell shouldn't Murray do the same, same thing? Why shouldn't Murray have a chance against Denis? I think Murray has a chance. If he just recovers in good time, if, it, if just his body is feeling good, he has a good chance. I will give Murray my slightest edge against Denis Shapovalov. Denis Shapovalov is an Amphos error machine. He does a lot of Amphos errors. So, and Murray can squeeze a lot of Amphos errors from Denis Shapovalov's racket. I will give Murray my slightest edge. Berrettini won in four sets. Then Diego has won two matches with, despite having a horrible serve. 
so, uh, so guys, uh, Chile just won, like I said. Let's see what Federer can do uh, later today against uh, Ricard Gasquet. Red Hat is 18-2 to Federer, so Federer uh, owns Ricard Gasquet in Red Hat. The only two victories Ricard has against uh, Federer are on clay. I will give Federer my edge there, 60% winning chance to Federer and 40% winning chance to Gasquet. But I will not, I will not be surprised if G Gasquet defeats Federer at all. I will never be surprised what anything what will, what, what will get from Federer. But I will give my edge to Federer. I think Federer beats Ricard Gasquet. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this 25 minute, uh, 25 minute long video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe and see you next time. Peace.